Eagle from Heaven back with another video, and uh, it's been a minute, and it's probably going to be a minute for another Auburn video, because Auburn football, dog, is drop dead terrible. Uh, probably the worst I've seen in five years minimum, uh, maybe longer, and that's going to be the premise of this video, <laughs> but that's not this part of the video. This part is going to be going over the Arkansas and Auburn matchup, and get my own insight after that, so I'm just look at some various opinions, uh, hoggies. Eagles, etc., etc. I know there's people that's pissed that are described to Auburn fans as Eagles. Listen, man, it doesn't matter. No Auburn fans gonna give a damn about what is being discussed about Auburn football in about five weeks from now, or even two weeks from now. <laughs> so let's, let's go ahead and get this over with. All right, Felipe. This is how they open this up. Felipe Franks did a good job of not throwing into the risky areas. <laughs> 10th in the SEC passer rating, 10th in passing yardage. This is with guys like Terry Wilson that don't look comfortable throwing to anything to tight window. Bonin's who looked dead awful uh, last week. Um, uh, Brennan had like 27 picks against Mississippi State. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Uh, you know, I don't know who else. Felipe Franks is horrible. He's a horrible quarterback. Uh, Dwayne Mathis probably had a higher rating than him. So, you know, it's just... Keep it going. Um, Bonitz, 13th in SEC passer rating. Even after an incomparably, I would say, well-looking game against Kentucky, when you consider how Bo usually looks against fairly confident quarterbacks. Uh, defense, uh, not defense, but teams. I want to say, I mean, Kentucky doesn't have a really good defense. But 11th and 205 passing yards per game. And I think you average that out. I think you had like around like 280, 260 against Kentucky and about five against Georgia. So, you know, about where you would expect that from an average perspective. Um, running backs. Um, all running backs suck. I of the tank. Well, let me say this. Our running backs don't suck, but our running game sucks. Uh, tank, amazing. Fantastic. Tank, great. DJ. After the LSU game, uh, question mark. Just a big question mark. Sean Shivers. Listen. And Xavier McKinney hit. Fine. Fantastic. There's a certain level of, you know, I think uh, bias and, and wishfulness that goes into people's perspective on Sean Shivers. This is, it just doesn't, the insight I'm seeing doesn't lead up or doesn't equal the product, the output. I mean, he's not a uh, inside outside back. He's going outside or he's going inside. He's not doing like, he's not like carry on right vision. Inside out there cutting outside. And let me mention, you know, Auburn's running back or uh, offensive line has pretty much decreased every year, year over year for the past five years. Um seventeen, while not being good, was significantly better than this year's, uh, which is horrible. Which like Imagine if you had an entire bucket of peanuts at a Logan's Roadhouse, which if you're not from this area, you may not know what Logan's Roadhouse is. Logan's Roadhouse, and it's just nothing but shells, no nuts in it, paws. And that's offensive line. There's no nuts in it, paws. Um, going back, yeah, Rakeem Boyd, pretty solid running back. I mean, from what I know, historically, pretty decent running back. I've been there for like, what, five years now? Uh, receivers, we got better receivers, but... Seth might be hurt, so I don't know who else. I mean, we can throw the Eli Stowe, but apparently they're uh, very trepidatious on the idea of throwing to both Stove and Seth in the same game, unless it's against fodder opponents like Kentucky. I don't just call Kentucky decent opponent. I, they're not. Um, Toby Hudson, amazing. Zavon, Zavon Caper is amazing. All these amazing receivers are high school that we just can't throw the ball to because we have two guys who scheme up an uh, uh, offense like, like me and you watching this video right now. Oh, tight end play. We also have pretty decent tight end play. You know, uh, Arkansas always has tight end play. So, I mean, you know. Uh, Arkansas had a really good offensive line against Georgia. Well, relatively good offensive line against Georgia. Um, Auburn had an awful offensive line. Defensive line. <laughs> defensive line, man. We looked. Uh, uh, defensive line was horrible last, last week. Just. I don't think they. I don't think there was a single drive I watched 
where I felt like Georgia, their offensive line lost to Auburn. Just, like, I felt like sometimes, like, you know, Stetson Bennett just, like, has the arm talent of uh, prime SpongeBob, like the fucking SpongeBob meme with the skinny arm. I guess generally, like, Stetson Bennett's, like, limited SpongeBob level strength. But other than the times where Stetson Bennett just played like Stetson Bennett, uh, they, we didn't, didn't win the, uh, line battle too often on that end. Uh, linebackers, KJ Britt, I think is done. I think he's done, period, for this season. I think he's done. Uh, Owen Papo, linebackers looked horrible last week. Um, something to consider. Uh, they mentioned Chandler Wooten. He's not even playing this year, isn't he? He's like out for the year because of his uh, COVID and all that. Um, yeah, Christian Tut is is really. Like, I don't. I don't this is, these are not all. Any of these are personal. Like, none of these are personal attacks. Christian Tut has looked bad to this point this year. Christian Tut has looked bad. I mean, he looked bad in Alabama. He was just bad for a while. But he's looked. Bad this year, like not even knowing what's happening in the field type of bad. Roger McCurry has been straight. Uh, got fried on uh Pickens a couple times, but you know what, what can you do? I mean, um, Jalen Simpson, I believe he's a starter, and he got hurt early in that game or something like that. He got he was out for the game, something like that. Uh, couldn't play. That hurt. Smoke got ejected. That very much hurt. Pritch looked okay in relief. Um, I believe. That's about all the injuries I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, yeah, it's, it's special teams easily. Pretty much the only thing that, if you've looked at Nintendo, it's just that Chad and, and um, uh, Gus get up for Arkansas, which, oh, hey, Auburn, you know, a team with rivals that happen to be the number one team in the past decade, uh, number, what, seven, six team in the past decade in Georgia, uh, number what four three team in the past decade in LSU? Yeah, you know we got these rivals, but let's get up for Arkansas every week, every year. Let's go for Arkansas. You know we really we want to win to Arkansas. Okay? That's that's a guarantee. Win. We need to win Arkansas. Going two and six against Georgia, that, you know that's okay. You can't get past that. You know two and six, two and five is LSU. What can you do about that? But Arkansas, that's got to be a win every time. Arkansas preview is still Arkansas. Now this is one of the most Barnard optimist blindly ridiculous individuals that cover Auburn football. One of the worst opinions I see on Auburn football day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. Easily one of the worst insights I can ever account for when it comes to Auburn. Ridiculous. Um, we got another level. We're going to play. We can go to the We got about like now, listen, hitting your chest, beating your chest after, okay, so it's, it's what, 29 to 16, I think, something like that, 29 to 16. Um, one touchdown, that should have been a Kentucky touchdown. You can you can say whatever you want to say about the pick six that could have been a The Kentucky touchdown that was taken off, it doesn't matter what the pick six is after that. Kentucky touchdown that's, that's taken off. Um, several field goal trips I just got let awry because Terry Wilson can't throw a football in the red zone. You want to beat your chest for finishing up, what, 13 ahead, 16 ahead over Kentucky. You look, you look, you didn't look good. You lost a statistic matter, battle by quite a bit. You beat your chest after lose, after barely getting by Kentucky. Okay, cool. Um, Whatever, sure. And here's the excuses, of course. Auburn's a Royal Georgia. Let me know the best three. See if I can see the nation. It was good. You know, so my push wasn't good. Listen, this this right here. Okay, you 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 throw this in between behind this and this. They did it wasn't good. They looked bad. Let's just just get over it. It's it, it was bad. I mean, this this is even like, like this this right here is only. I mean, I'm at this point, I'm just picking up the article, picking apart the article. It's only easy to figure out. Is it easy to figure out? Is it obviously easy? 
Washington State wins like what? They won like seven, eight games a season in the past couple of seasons. I mean, it's not like he was just like bad. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's not the hardest. I mean, he runs like eight plays, but like, but I mean, look at this. It has nothing to do with Arkansas being amazingly better all of a sudden. It had everything to do with Mississippi State not really being that great. Arkansas figuring out the system. At the end of the day, Arkansas still beat a better team than Mississippi State. And this guy, this guy, this guy, like, oh, you know, we, we, we handled that, 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 that predicted upset uh, with Kentucky. What? Do we have any reason to believe that Arkansas who's blah, 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 is worse than Arkansas? Absolutely not. No, I don't know what the, what the point of this is. This is the best Arkansas team in like, what, four or five? It's 2015. When Auburn didn't beat them by like 60. But, I mean, like, they still were the best teams. It's like the worst Auburn team since, well, 2016 has happened. But 2015, Auburn, also Arkansas. This is close. This is the closest matchup since then, I would say. Is this, this is what gets me about this dude. Auburn beat a ranked Kentucky. I knew it was coming. Auburn beat a ranked Kentucky. A Kentucky team that just lost the old gave it like forty one to old miss. Uh and we only could muster twenty nine with this supposed great program. Um and be Mississippi State they live the bottom of the SEC this season. What is he talking about? What is that based on? They look just as impressive as Kentucky. They look better than Kentucky. What is this based on of? Uh, what? I don't. Okay, wh whatever. The home crowd will get things back on track. Okay. Okay. Bow throws three touchdown passes. Okay. Okay. I don't like I, his insight. That's just absolutely ridiculous. It, it, this insight is why people like dislike Alabama fans usually. And like people in former fans like dislikes all because it's just devoid of like like real rational conclusions. It comes down to what I think this program is like and what I believe it's about. Anyway, let's just go on to the rest of this. This is like betting basically. I think so they uh, this is the Arkansas board. I'm not gonna really read this because I, I don't give I don't care about what Arkansas people say to be honest with you. Um Mm, 31-24, okay. Uh, upset, I guess that's reasonable. Uh, Bonets, what about the flaws at Auburn? And th this, is what, this leads to my second part of my video, and we could probably go ahead and get to this pretty soon. Um, yeah, Arkansas, wheels come off, yeah, okay. Okay, uh, that's pretty predictions. Uh, Auburn, 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 Second point of our prediction. So, we don't really need to scroll. I mean, I can just aimlessly scroll through something, but I believe that it is important to, con to contextualize um, some things here. Auburn, at, at a point right now, has lost their best linebacker probably for the year. They've had multiple guys go out with, with injuries and, and um, and, you know, targeting in just two two games. I mean, that's happened like two games, multiple guys. Um, the quarterback has looked incredibly frustrated for like 55 minutes of a 60-minute game. The only relevant game. Um, looked bad. Looked, like, looked, looked mad and, and bad also, but mad primarily. Um, they're also important to keep in mind. The head coach has made yet another move where he hires an offensive coordinator to shake up the offense. And while the offense has looked marginally shaken up, it's also looked just as anemic as it did before, Gus. Um, the offensive line still looks bad. Several several recruits, um, several off offensive line recruits, still looks awful. Really bad. Um... And I think it's also important to keep in mind that that 
they are currently now training down for the country Miss Jaquincy McKinstry lost him just because of one really horrible game. <laughs> Very important match. Scoob Williams, the, these two, if you follow most Auburn recruiting analysts, Jaquincy, Jaquincy, I want the same as he won't be at Auburn. Jaquincy and Scoob, one's training really badly to, to Alabama, and J uh, Scoob, I believe, is still supposed to be within the folds of Auburn. Crystal ball earlier there, I believe, but, you know, so it's still been the folds of Auburn. They, they lose these two dudes, and it's over with. The crew, the crew class goes to shit, from what I understand, if they lose these two dudes. That, that's from what I understand. So, keep that in mind. Um, a marriage with them is supposed to be what was like a 60-40 shot, depending on what who you listen to. Completely gone by now. Just completely gone because of that. Like, gone. Um, so, that's cool. Apparently, Georgia, I think, also pressed, um, I think Georgia pressed Scoob after that game or before that game, so, probably lost him, too, I, apparently still some, some love for, you know, Jeremiah or away, but probably lost him, too, probably Georgia gets him, too, so that's cool, um, just keep in mind, so the recruiting class, the recruiting class, which is, like, the, the worst, I think, Gus recruiting class to this point, period, um, was supposed to be hinge on late momentum. The late momentum is gone. The late momentum is gone now. So what was an awful, well, not awful, but really bad recruiting class is now gone. Kamari Lasseter, uh, I believe, is gone. Uh, Dylan Green went to Georgia, I think, basically. So that's gone. We, he's supposed to be the backup. We know, but we traded him for Jaquincy, and we didn't have Jaquincy, so it's gone. Uh, Smell, Smile London, uh, t Tennessee, I think also Georgia recruited. Uh, probably gone because Tennessee was good and Auburn was horrible. Uh, apparently, um, I don't want to talk about any insider info that, like, I've seen on various sites. But apparently, our recruiting staff, certain, certain positional coaches, um, very important. The guys that have been very heralded are apparently overblown and uh, probably over-talked about, over-discussed. And, you know, if linebackers go one way versus the other, you know, that might be a big part of it. <laughs> I'm not talking any names, but some guys, you know, I'm, I'm just saying that. I see that some guys can always been cracked to be a recruit, you know. Some some guys are carrying the, the weight for other guys. And, you know, there's only so much weight that can be carried on. And speaking of weight being carried, apparently I'm here in the defense. Uh, you know, a little bit of frustrations, you know. Not not saying any position, any coaches, any anything like that. But just frustrations on the defense. Uh, which is important because there's frustrations quite a while now. He's been frustrations for like three years. I mean, defense is hard carry three years. It's, it's hard it's to ask somebody to be in the same way that Boom was supposed to be like, um, you know, the backdrop for Gus 2015. Kevin Steele is supposed to retire, have a relatively easy job as a, you know, to help out a offensively minded coach. It has not been easy. It's supposed to be retiring in like a couple years. It has not been easy. Uh, it has not been easy to recruit because of how bad the product has been and how certain things have gone as far as coaches leaving and blah, blah, blah. Bad. It's bad. Right? It's bad. It's a dumpster fight. It's bad. I'm just going to type in. You know, it's bad. It's In my opinion, here's the, here's the crux of my video here. You have, in my opinion, a, a crossroads. And it starts with this game. It's a crossroads. You have one road which goes to 2015. Which is not good. Not, not ideal. Not ideal. But what, what you can tell by me leading off with that, that is the preferable option. And that's the preferable option. There's only one other road. The other road, twenty twelve, and you know the way the way I, the way I look at it, I hate this too so much, man. I, just, I swear to God, I like not on a personal level, but just such a horrible curator of all my content. Um, 
The reason why I say 2015 and 2012, there's no, there's no good, there's no road that's good. There's no road that's good that's coming. That, that's not, Auburn is horrible right now. I'm like, on so many levels. Steve's line looks outclassed. Offensive line looks outclassed. You can, quarterback, whoever is going up against the quarterback looks out. Quarterback, Bo looks not good. Like, not dramatically improved. Secondary does not look good. There's no, there's no, you're not making those amount of not good units good in like eight weeks. It's not happening. But 2015 was special in that a certain quarterback change was made. I'm not calling for a quarterback change. A certain dramatic shift in philosophy happened with Sean White in that allowed for a not horrible product to be put on the field. Not a great one. Not a great one, but a, a not horrible one. You know, you got carry on. Looks like the beginnings of a future stud. Got more reps as time progressed. Looked good. Looked good. Wildcat, things like that. You know, blah, blah, blah. Um, it felt fresh. It felt fresh after, after the LSU game. Things were opened up. Felt new. Felt young. Felt like you had a chance in these games. Now, it's a, there's no there's no possibility for the quarterback change. Gus has died with a bow. There's no Joey coming. Grant Lloyd is your future physiotherapist, sports therapist. That's Grant Lloyd. Kalen Newton is going to be given a chance to play quarterback. I don't even know if he's practicing quarterback. Probably far better at running than Kalen. Bo looks horrible running the football. Is can he throw? I don't know. But he can't be worse than one than Bo last year, last week. Um, Sawyer Payton. Oh, God, my throat hurts. Pause. Sawyer Payton. Not good. Don't say that's got to get better. No, it doesn't get better. Um... Sawyer Pate, I don't know if he, is he, is he, is he contending to school? Like, does he go to, like, Southern Union, like, come in and play, like, quarterback every once in a while? I think it's what he does, right? Um, bad. Not Sawyer Pate, but just, like, there's, there's not a quarterback change happening. 57-year-old Court Sandberg, probably not happening. Um, but there came a dramatic shift. There can be. A dramatic shift somewhere. They can do more outside runs, which worked. They can do more quick passes, which are better than doing long passes, which with a D2 offensive line and a quarterback that gets frigid the second that someone gets past that D2 offensive line, which, you know, chicken versus egg situation there, I suppose. Um, they can learn how to play zone. So it's a little it's kind of learned. Georgia has, I don't know for how many years, just picked apart the man coverage, other than last year where they looked like it. Then you look at an SEC team throwing the football. It looks like a fucking Sunbelt team. But picked apart this dude's defense and secondary every year for the past, like, I don't know how many years now, like six, like even before he got here, even when he was at LSU. Still picked it apart at Auburn in future sight. Very remedial passing game. Stetson Bennett was a quarterback. They have one really elite talented receiver. And they just pick apart Auburn secondary every time they match up against them. It's surgical. Prime Brady against uh, Colts. I don't know. Every time it happens. Without fail. You cannot tell me that that the, the these highly rated CBs that work in the next level can't figure out how to defend Demetrius Robinson and I don't even know who else they have. The, the other dudes that happen to be named out of receiver position that couldn't get open against Arkansas last, like two weeks ago. <sighs> Pass rushers. Find some fat slob at some frat right now that has some decent genetics on them right now that can be toned into an edge rusher. Because what you have on the roster cannot edge rush. They can't edge rush at all. They haven't edge rushed in three years. How long has it been gone three years and they haven't figured out how to, the concept of edge rushing in three years? 
So here's my here's my here's my final point. Either they come out tomorrow and beat the dog mess, the hog mess, the hog sh sh out of Arkansas, which is possible. I mean, they're still far more talented. They're at home. And they look like a team that is a cut above the filth in the SEC. Just barely, but a cut above the filth in the SEC. Just above Arkansas. Above maybe, you know, the Vanderbilts, the Kentuckys. That, that, that's about where you want them to be at. About comparable to Ole Miss and Mississippi State. Maybe a little bit better, depending on how the game goes. That's where you, that's where you want them to be after a season like this. They're not going to be Georgia or Alabama. Uh, that's not going to happen. But, it, you know, for, they're not going to be at that level. But this, this is where you want them to be at. Or they lose to Arkansas. And if you remember the Arkansas game in 2012, that was it. That was the that was when the, the, the boot met teeth. And it was over with for our Auburn season. Over with. That, that ended very quickly. That was done. Um, and it was dramatically you know, embarrassing uh, to lose to... Was it was that was that John L. Smith? Was that who was there? Or was that Petrino? I think it was John L. Smith, I wanna say. So, you know, you know. Don't think other might have been John L. Smith. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But John L. Smith? I don't know. Was it was it John Was it John was it John L. Smith? You know, look, look. Just see what that was John L. Smith did. You know, we're gonna end it on this. You know, that was John L. Smith, you know. John L. Smith. They lost to John L. Smith. By, by what? I believe it's about. You know, look, look, give me Alex. Give me. Give me. Tyler Wilson, right? It was it Tyler Bray? Tyler, Tyler Wilson, I think. Give me. Give me twenty three. Give me twenty three, not nineteen. Give me twenty three. Twenty three. Damn, 17. Tough. All right, so this was, and it was Holly Wilson. This was Arkansas team that had just lost to ULM. Just lost to ULM. And they couldn't score until the third quarter, and they didn't score again after the, They scored one touchdown against a team that lost to ULM. If... Auburn loses to Arkansas. This will be the worst loss. I believe, period. And period. I want to phrase it. The worst loss since you know I was going to say 2012. I'm not going to say 2012. Since Georgia in 2016. This will be the worst loss since Georgia in 2016. And again, that's why, you know, at home against probably a less talented team than even Jordan 2016 because Auburn should not lose to Arkansas. But Auburn also shouldn't lose to Jacob Eason being two wins away from a playoff contention. Bye.